Transformers are static machines that transfer electrical energy from one circuit to another with the help of Faraday's law of induction. In this video, we will cover all parts of three-phase oil transformers. Also, the mechanical protections used inside the transformer. Consider subscribing to Electrical Engineering Planet channel to support our community. In any transformer, we have the main tank, which is the body of the transformer that contains the core, the windings, and also the oil. The tank protects the core and the windings from external environment. Also, we can attach other transformer accessories on it. Tank bodies are made by fabricating rolled steel plates or aluminum plates. Inside the tank, there are the core and the windings. The core is the magnetic coupling between the primary and secondary windings by providing a low reluctance path for electromagnetic flux. The core is made by stacking thin sheets of silicon steel, which are separated by thin insulating material. This arrangement ensures minimizing the high stresses losses and eddy currents. The core consists of lamps, which carries the primary and secondary windings. These lamps are magnetically coupled by the yokes. Actually, there are two types of core constructions, core type and chill type. In core type construction, we have two windows and three lamps. Here, the three phase windings surround the three lamps. In chill type construction, we have six windows and three inner lamps. Here, the three phase winding surround the three inner lamps. In both types, the low voltage and high voltage windings of the same phase are wrapped on the same limb. The low voltage winding is first wrapped on the core limb surface with sufficient insulation between the core body and the winding. Then, high voltage is wrapped with sufficient insulation between low voltage and high voltage windings. This arrangement is economical since we have not too much insulation between the core and the low voltage winding. But if we reverse the arrangement, now we need high insulation between the grounded core and the high voltage winding. Inside the tank we have oil also, which provides more insulation between the conducting parts and also we use oil on cooling purposes. Now we need to connect the incoming and outgoing cables to the transformer, so we use terminals for this purpose. These terminals are mounted over the tank upon the porcelain or epoxy bushings. These bushings are insulators that insulate the terminals from the body. Here we have high voltage and low voltage bushings because we have high voltage and low voltage windings. In medium voltage to low voltage transformers, the terminals and bushings are inside a junction box. On top of the transformer tank there is oil conservator which is a small cylindrical tank that is connected to the main tank through a pipe. Conservator provides adequate space for oil expansion and contraction. Also, it works as a reservoir for the main tank. Let's illustrate this point more. Ambient temperature and loading conditions play an important role in changing the temperature of the oil, which will cause expansion for oil at high temperature and contraction for oil at low temperature. Hence, an outlet space is required to adjust this expansion and contraction. We got this inlet and outlet air through a breather pipe. Here, the oil is filled up to 3 fourths of conservator at normal conditions and the rest of the space inside the conservator is occupying my air volume. When oil temperature decreases, a contraction on oil will happen which will cause more inlet air through the breather to the conservator to compensate the contracted volume. When oil temperature increases, oil expands. So, to accommodate this extra volume of oil, oil will push the extra air outside the transformer through the breather. This process of air in and out through the breather is called a transformer breathing. On conservator, there is a level gauge to show the level of oil. 
you will find the silica gel inside the breather to prevent moisture from the inlet air. Also, an oil cap is connected to catch any contaminations in the air. As we said before, the oil temperature increases with loading and ambient temperature. So, to control the rise of temperature we need a cooling system. We use radiator to cool down the oil. For different transformers power ratings, we use different types of cooling systems. For example, ONAN, which stands for Oil Natural Air Natural. Here, we let the natural air flow between the radiators to cool down the oil. Another example is ONAF, Oil Natural Air Forced. Here, we attach cooling fans to the radiators to force air to flow through the radiator. Also, we have OFAF, Oil Forced Air Forced. Here we have oil pumps fitted at the bottom of the transformer tank to force oil to go inside radiators and there are cooling fans to force the air to flow through the radiator. Another important part in transformer is onload and offload tappet changers. Tappet changer is a mechanism that allows for variable turn ratios to be selected in different steps. In no load tappet changer, you can adjust the turn ratio manually for de-energized transformers. But in onload tap changers, it will be adjusted automatically through an automatic system. But onload tap changer transformers are expensive and complex. The tap changer is connected on the high voltage side, which is the lower current side, for easy access and to minimize the current load during operation. Sudden and violent short circuits inside the oil-cooled transformer generates enormous amount of gas, which causes a substantial increase in internal pressure. If the pressure cannot be externally discharged, there is a danger that the transformer could explode. So we use pressure relief device. This pressure relief device, which acts as an emergency exit for oil and air gases inside a transformer. It's a metallic pipe with a diaphragm at one end, held slightly above the tank. If a fault happens, it will cause high pressure inside the transformer, which will cause rupture to the diaphragm to vent the pressure. Now, let's discuss the mechanical protection on transformers. These protections are connected to the digital protection relay to detect actual faults inside the transformer. In pressure relief device, there are two limit switches connected to the metallic pipe. One limit switch sends alarm signal and the other switch sends a trip signal. For oil conservator, there are two relays related to the oil level to send alarm and trip signals. For winding temperature, we have a monitoring gauge with also alarm and trip signals. For oil temperature, we have also a monitoring gauge with also alarm and trip signals. At last, we have buckles relay, which is considered as one of the most important parts of oil transformers. Buckles relay is an oil gas actuated relay, which sends faults in the oil. Buckles relay is mounted on the connection pipe between the conservator and the main tank. Inside buckles relay, we have two floats, the upper float and the lower float. As you know, any fault inside the oil will generate enough heat, which will cause generating gases that will gradually move towards the conservator through the connecting pipe and the buckles relay. If minor fault occur, so a slow gases accumulation will happen, which is not too strong. In this case, the upper float only will move and it will send alarm signal to the digital protection relay. But if we have a large fold, this will generate a fast gas accumulation, which will force the lower float to move and send a trip signal to the digital protection relay. In the next video, we will show what is the difference between electrical power and electrical energy. Please feel free to answer this question in the comment section down below. Consider subscribing to Electrical Engineering Planet channel. Also don't forget to share, like and let knowledge enlighten your world. Thanks for watching.